it was not so focused on the finance numbers, but it was focused on like the strategic level, how to approach and navigate the transformation of the companies, for example, speaking about the new tools, the new automation and how they approach their career lives. Hello and welcome to the Gross Profit Podcast. My name is James Kennedy. I'm the CEO and co-founder at procurementexpress.com, the purchasing software that takes the hustle out of managing your company's spend with magical features. But we're not going to talk about that today. Instead, I have invited along Yorai Lovas. Yorai is partnered with EBCG, uh, which is the company behind a, for a conference that I attended last November 2023 which is the CFO Forum based in Prague. So I thought it'd be fun to invite Uri along so we could chat about some of the highlights from the conference and maybe give you a feel about what it's like to attend one of these conferences. Uri, thanks very much for coming along. Maybe you could just introduce yourself, tell us a bit about where you are and, and what you do. Hello, everyone. My name is Uri Loas. Uh, I'm the managing partner of a platform uh, focused on C-level candidates uh, called Jobs by BCG. Uh, I'm partnering with uh, the ABCG team who is behind the uh, conferences, as, as already James described, but also great trainings. And uh, currently, uh, together with Roman Slovenias, who is the CEO of uh, ABCG, we are running the third pillar of ABCG, and that is the jobs platform called Jobs by ABCG. And we are focusing specifically on the ABCG participants, which is like more than 10,000 or over 13,000 participants for the last 10 years. And we are now bringing additional value to these participants. And that's the career journey through Jobs Platform, which we are having. For people who aren't aware, you could give us a bit more background on EBCG. You know, when was it set up and who should be a part of it? Tell us a bit more about it. EBCG is well known within this region in Central Europe, but I know that there will be conferences in Switzerland, for example. And previously, there will be conferences in US as well. Uh, ABCG is well known for the CEO Forum and CFO Forum, mostly. We attended together the CFO Forum in Prague last year. Currently on the schedule for this year, there is another bunch of CEO Forums and CFO Forums in Slovakia and also in other countries. Then ABCG is running uh, well-renowned uh, the, the online training schedules. Uh, they're offering the trainings uh, for finance guys, sales guys, uh, marketing, and etc. And currently also, as I said, we are starting and uh, we are now running the first projects on the jobs by bcg platform and we are offering this like the full package for for the participants from the conferences to trainings and also supporting them with the current changes the first thing to note is that this was a continuous professional development opportunity there were 14 points available from the acca for going along yes it's obviously targeted for finance professionals. Tech people love a good conference. They're always coming up with conferences, but there are not so many for finance professionals. But I saw some parallels in a way, and it was interesting to see the first thing I noticed was that this was a nice size. About I felt like there was about 100, 150 people there. It was below 200, if I'm right. And that was the, the right size uh, for the conference. I agree with you. Was this the first time you've been at one of these events, Yura, or have you been to similar events and how would you compare it to other events that you've been to? We started partnering with EBCG just last year uh, and I attended the first conference uh, here in Bratislava. Now, uh, that was the CEO forum, which is the best CEO conference uh, in Slovakia. And I was amazed uh, what kind of quality ABCG team is providing to the conference participants. And then I came to Prague and they even <laughs> level up the, the conference, I must say, a uh, really high quality conference. And I fully agree with you that the amount of participants was so right that uh, it was still the familiarity uh, with the participants there, even that I'm not the finance guy. Uh, I was able to speak with uh, someone who is a pure CFO for like decades and uh, we've been able to interact and speak about uh, various topics. And currently, we are also preparing for a pharma conference uh, happening in Basel in Switzerland. Uh, and uh, we will be also presenting their uh, jobs platform. Uh, so you could see that there is a whole variety. Uh, but focusing on a specific niche uh, segments from the industry. And uh, as you said, there is not many finance conferences on the market. And EBCG is uh, filling this gap in the market. 
First thing that I really noticed was that the range of industries, so it was manufacturing, services, financial services, hospitals, public service, private service. So it brought a lot of, quite a, quite a range of people. I'll admit, I don't know about you, you're probably more confident than I was. I was a little bit nervous because I'm not a finance guy and I was going there thinking I'm going to be way out of my depth here. People are going to be talking about stuff I have no idea about. But the first thing I noticed was in terms of vibe of the place, it was very friendly. People were very open. I'm also a kind of a vendor, so I was a little bit nervous of, you know, being there in a sort of a hunter mode or something, or people would take me the wrong way. But the, that was totally untrue, and people were so interested. I really learned a lot more about, you know, the different types of things people are doing. I was really surprised to see the variety of stuff. And what actually surprised me kind of as well was there was some, you know, finance-specific talks, but a lot of the talks were far more focused around leadership in general, uh, you know, managing a team, you know, all of these issues, which actually any C-level person would be, no matter which discipline you're in, would be coming up again. So I thought it was going to be over my head, but I learned a lot more than I was expecting to, because once you get over the day-to-day of you know, writing code or doing your accounts or whatever, the, the challenges become kind of similar at the C-suite pretty quickly. I had the same feelings uh, because previously I was running large teams on the corporate world. Uh, I was acting as a head of transformation for Adeco Group uh, for EMEA region. And I, and that was a lot of about change management, for example, and a lot of guys on the, <laughs> a lot of guys on the stage were definitely speaking like the, right about the change management, uh, about the management as such on, on the C level, as you described, uh, and that was a gl- great uh, learning and listening for me as well to be there, uh, and, and then be able to interact with the guys on the networking event, which was on the first day, but even on the second day during the lunch or during the breaks. It was not so focused on the finance numbers, but it was focused on like the strategical level, how to approach the, and navigate the transformation of the companies, for example, or now speaking about the new tools, the new automation and how they approach their career lives, uh, that, 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 that was great even for me, who is not pure finance guy. I must say it, it, it helped me a lot uh, then to speak with the finance guys, uh, interviewing them on, on the right scale. And that was one thing I noticed as well compared to the tech conference. In tech conference, it's all change. Come on, let's go. More change. Let's do it. Whereas this was like, hold on. Let's talk about this change first. Let's think for a second. What's the yes. impact going to be? Yes, yes. What we're going to do here, we're going to pick out a few of our favorite talks. Um, I mean, all our talks were good. And, and one thing I'd like to say before we got started was that there were different levels of talks, which I thought was fantastic. There were people who were probably presenting for the first time and people who were presented a thousand times. And actually that added a lot, I felt. The sense of community and, and friendliness meant that everyone was very well received. And I would recommend, even if you were thinking, if you were invited to speak at this thing, it doesn't matter what level you're at. The audience was very understanding. I think I got something from every single uh, presentation. If I should pick one, uh, that was the lady, maybe you remember, uh, that free diving lady. Uh, I, I checked the name because I, I don't want to screw it up. So she, she called Katarina Lins. She was on the first day on the stage, but also on the second day, the last uh, speech. And uh, that really stuck in my mind <laughs> because uh, she was not speaking only on the business topic, but she was speaking how to manage stress, how to be a better leader with managing the difficult situations and how to manage them. Because, you know, she was a free diver and she got some world records uh, and she really had to clear her mind to be there down and to be there so long, like four minutes without any oxygen. That, that is incredible. That really stuck in my mind as, as a non-financed uh, speech. That was amazing. I, I think that until today, I'm still thinking about that words. And I even uh, say very, very positive words to her now when we finish the, the conference. So that, that is totally number one. I totally agree. I was, I was terrified just explaining what she does, which is, you know, dive down into the oceans. At a certain stage, the, the water is so heavy, it just pushes you down. You won't even float back up. It was so humbling because you're like, next time I feel stressed, I'll think about what she did. And I was like, well, that's not really not, not that bad. I can't imagine being responsible for my own life like that. If you won't make one mistake, you just sink down to the bottom of the ocean and never come back. And she, she had such authority on the subject that it was like, okay, 
you know, if that lady can do that, I can probably get my accounts out on time at the end of the month, or I can probably do this hire or whatever I need to do, you know. And then on the last day, she actually sort of helped us with some breeding exercises, which I loved because you could tell everyone was totally out of their comfort zone uh, a little bit to do it. You know, we were all buttoned down in a professional sort of capacity. And next thing we were, you know, lying on the floor and concentrating on our breathing and stuff. So I thought that was a brilliant pick and it sort of added a bit of difference to all the other stuff. That was a non-business talk, but that was a great pick for like a refreshment for, from all the speakers on the stage. It was amazing to hear the lady which has some board records, how she managed that. And that, that could be an inspiration for a top management level as well. And I fully get that. My first pick was Jens William Meyer from BIT. What really struck me uh, about his talk was that he was explaining how he was part of Bosch, a very big established engineering company. They had a huge transformation project, which was to go from analog to digital. And then at the same time, they got sold to a Chinese company. So his talk was transformation everywhere, everything all at once, which I thought was very appropriate because he had to deal with changing the business model, changing the product, changing the management structure. I was glued to that because part of me feels like eventually I'm going to work for a Chinese company at some stage. It feels like that's the future, you know, that's they're taking over the world in a way. So I was really fascinated by what it was like. And Two things struck from his talk. One was the $10,000 electric car that's going to be coming out from China in the next couple of years. And then also how they, although they, they were acquired by the Chinese company, they, through their own internal innovation, they now supply BYD, which is the lar largest uh, tech manufacturer or automotive manufacturer in the world. Now they you know, having been taken over, their innovation gave them distribution into China that they just would not ever have had access to before. And, you know, with his finance background, I think he had an auditing background, and he was the one that drove a lot of that from the finance team, you know, a lot of that complicated interaction and stuff. So I thought that was, it was a standout. The car in particular, especially since I've just made Got many times more than that for my current electric car. <laughs> I was like, damn, I should have waited a couple of years and I could have bought that. But I specifically also remember this discussion, this speech, you know, because I, I was working for a Chinese company you know, for four years. And that was also the automotive company, tier one auto automotive company. We've been producing automotive interiors, uh, actually the largest automotive interior company uh, globally. And that, I would say that that was one of the best uh, working experience for me. Uh, to work also with the Asian culture, which is completely different. The Chinese are completely different, but my Chinese colleagues were, were one of the best, I must say. What advice would you give for someone who's about to start working with a Chinese partner? Like, is there a piece of advice that you took away from your experience in those four years? First, learn the basics of uh, the formal Chinese culture, how you handle the business card, for example, how you shake the hand, how you behave on the meetings or how you behave on the lunch. Uh, that, that's like little small things, but that matters really a lot. That, that's maybe advice number one. Advice number two, uh, let's open your mind because for them, nothing is impossible, I must say, specifically for the innovations. And speaking about the electric cars, they will dominate the world for sure. And, and, and that was that was shown in 2015 when I was working for an automotive company. The prototypes which we've been producing were like instantly bought by Ferrari, uh, Porsche, and, and these like premium brands. Uh, and that was the prototypes for upcoming 10 years, I would say. And, and that was manufactured by Chinese company. So open your mind because everything is possible. Uh, so you, you need to change your internal mindset, how you will approach the stuff and uh, what kind of goals are achievable. It sounds almost more kind of American in outlook and just like it, nothing is impossible. In, in a different way, in an yeah. Asian way. So who's next? What was the next talk for you that stuck out? I would mention Mr. Irji Jelinek from Cargo Partner. That was the a bit older guy, but uh, well experienced, very well experienced. He's working more than 20 years in that company. Basically, he built that, that company in the Czech Republic. He's acting as a, as a managing director. And specifically, I remember his speech because it was not so corporate. <laughs> it, it, it was like, 
out of the corporate world and how he set it up the corporate company in the Czech Republic. And that was a very, very, uh, very nice experience, very interesting speech uh, about how he managed the transformation and how he built it up the team, set up the managing uh, delivery status and so on and so on. That, that was very experienced guy and I really was attached to what he was speaking on the stage. I liked that the size of the conference meant that you could just go and talk to these speakers afterwards. They didn't disappear. They were part of the audience. Yes, they basically were sitting next to me. <laughs> so I, I, I was speaking about his experience and that, that was really amazing. Give him just follow up on, on the speech on the stage and very experienced guy. What, what, what was yours? The next one that really stuck with me which just was Lucien um, Moreno, who is head of Digital Transformation Hub in Renault with Renault. So Renault is a you know, massive, massive company. And obviously, we've been talking about automotive already. It wasn't just automotive at the, at the talk, I should say, but as it happens. And obviously, Renault is figuring out how to deal with all the changes that are happening. Lucien set up a financial innovation hub, which wasn't totally what I was expecting. I was like, well, I've heard of digital innovation, but it was specifically with a financial focus. And he had built up, I think, to 140 staff over a two-year period, something like that. And they're going to 400 over the next couple of years. And it was a great story about how, A, he managed to bring that project to Romania, even with a French company. You know, historically, he competed in internally to be able to do that. And then what I liked was his spirit, his uh, focus on innovation, like we spoke earlier about how change can be a good or a bad thing sometimes for the finance team, but he really embraced it and um, showed that, you know, finance can take a leading role, which was another insight I got from the whole conference as a whole was I met a lot of people working on finance teams with actual innovation projects in mind it makes sense logically like the finance team knows the blood of the company knows how the company whole works knows where the challenges are the blockers the pain points and it's such a natural place to find innovation because you know where the costs are yes you know you know yes. what the pain points are you see it all manifest in the p l yes and you know that's just a great place to start if you're looking for innovation maybe start with the with the finance team i, I would say that's a fair point because uh, you as a finance guy you, you see the numbers and you see what needs to be innovated you see what needs to run more effectively uh, and then you are attached to that kind of projects because you see it from that angle uh, so it totally makes sense to me that uh, we met a lot of cfos a lot of finance guys we've been running huge change transformation initiatives within that company because they've been very close to that. It reminds me, I had private discussions with people working on finance teams and how, you know, AI obviously has had a big impact. And the thing that struck me was these AI tools are immediately available to everyone all around the world. And immediately these finance teams were starting to use them and finding ways to you know, start applying them. I heard some innovative ideas around how doctors and hospitals were using transcription services to reduce the amount of time they spent doing paperwork. All these things, which were a time suck. Really, really exciting stuff, actually. Really good ideas. In contrast, again, to my tech conferences where we, we don't know what the problems are. We're running around with hammers trying to find nails. Here, all the problems were fully known down to the dollar or euro. And it was just like, okay, click the solution into place, a much, much easier way to go about it. Yes, uh, and uh, specifically speaking about this speech, I was also quite attached to that because it reminds me of my time in Adeco, where I was acting as a head of transformation and also running very similar initiatives, but on the recruitment side. <laughs> so I was I, I was listening very carefully to that because uh, I had the same experience, not from a finance perspective, but from the recruitment perspective. And I, I was running a lot of digital recruitment initiatives uh, in 13 countries in MR region. And we've been then speaking on the networking event about uh, his experience and my experience we, we've been exchanging. And that was uh, amazing discussion because really nice job done and combining with the newest technology and how they implemented it. Who next? Who you got next, Joy? Uh, so my third pick is Daniel Sologon from Semacon. Maybe you remember that guy who brought up the brick uh, from Romania directly on the stage. Why I'm picking this guy is because uh, it's stuck in my mind how he progressed from regular finance role to the CFO on the company and then to the managing director. And uh, that was a nice story behind him. 
a very common route in Europe, I think, through the CFO role to the CEO role. My last pick was a bit more technical. Maybe, I don't know if this was too basic for the rest of the audience, but I thought it was brilliant. It was um, from Patrick Batka, and it was how to manage CapEx project effectively using appraisal models for decision-making. This was Patrick's uh, lecture, I believe. Uh, he teaches this as his day job, and he's also consults on this. And it was all basically looking at the different ways of comparing investment opportunities depending on what type of investment it was, you know, like going through some, you know, some foundational things like IRR and payback period, et cetera. And then also explaining basically how to, you know, match the evaluation criteria with the language of the operations side. So, you know, something like IRR might be a little bit more technical, but like a payback period, pretty much anyone can understand easily and picking the right model to communicate to your team was an important takeaway I had from that talk. It was a bit more in the weeds. It was a little more, more detail oriented, which I actually kind of enjoyed. Uh, and it was very practical. Like you could, I could see that as something you could turn around, take back to the office, start using, you had a good reference for some books to, to reference and so on. And you could start using it kind of on a Monday morning. So it was a very tactical kind of talk. Some of the other stuff were quite strategic, but this was very practical and you can come and use it. You have to mention the host, John McGrath, before we wind up, I guess. Yeah, he was amazing. He was he was my interviewer, so <laughs> we had the discussion on the stage together. Uh, he, he was great. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, born and bred in Dublin, as far as I know, hometown boy here and uh, full of energy, half DJ, half finance enthusiast, I guess. I feel like we all came in a little bit not sure what to expect. And he brought us all together. He was just full of energy the whole time. And uh, I thought he was a, a really excellent host. I've never really seen anyone sort of drag the whole room together like that. It was done in a very good way, enjoyable way. And he had such obvious enthusiasm for what he was talking about that it really shone through. The funniest part and the part I enjoyed also was the we couldn't have had a, a finance seminar without a Excel tips from John McGrath. So he gave us uh, some tips on how to use Excel, which I thought was both equal part useful and hilarious. Uh, uh, and I have to admit, I was afterwards that night, I was in my hotel room trying to figure out how he was doing what he was doing on stage. He was like a maestro with Excel, but I thought that was that was funny and actually kind of useful and super nerdy, which is why I liked it, I guess. I, I specifically like his energy. And that, that's what I need to highlight in the first place. What I'm also looking forward is to meet him in Basel, in Switzerland, for the PPM conference, which also EBCG is going to organize there. And uh, also he will be a speaker and, and a host there now. So I'm looking forward to meet him. And again, his energy was amazing. <laughs> he basically made that environment of the whole conference more friendly, uh, that everyone was connected to everyone, even that uh, some of us were, were not the finest guys. So we, we've been able to speak basically with everyone. What about the venue? Would you, I mean, I would recommend people go, especially if they're on the fence. I found it a very welcoming, open environment. You could come from any background and really fit in there. I found it interesting. I'm a huge business nerd, so you can talk business with almost anybody there, you know, about different things. I found it so refreshing to be out of my own industry a little bit and hearing about these different things, the China story, automotive stuff, you know, the hospitals, all these things I'm not normally exposed to. I love Brock. Uh, that's one of the best cities, uh, which you could visit just maybe for a shorter trip, just for maybe longer weekend, definitely go to Prague. That, that's amazing, beautiful city with a lot of historical buildings and uh, amazing history behind. Secondly, the place where the EBCG conference was uh, placed, was, that was the building from like several hundred years ago, a uh, 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 very historical one. And uh, also full package, which ABCG was preparing uh, with the CFO forum there, with the meal and then the networking event and uh, the schedule, leaflets and everything uh, that was well organized. So thumbs up for that. And I noticed that the organizers, Jana, especially and all the team, they were, they didn't disappear. They were there in the evening. They didn't leave anyone out. They were including everyone, making sure everyone's very attentive. I think they said something along the lines. I got an email before we went there. So my, our, their objective is to make it as, the experience as comfortable as possible. And it certainly was, you know, it was very well done. And you spoke briefly about the jobs platform, but like, uh, and what you're hoping to do with your partnership with EPCG and how can people get in touch with you if they want to find out more? Maybe I will describe how 
just by ABCG ever happened because uh, I'm the person who is working for more than 12 years already in the headhunting and recruitment industry and working with the newest recruitment technology. And we've been building uh, with my team, we've been building the platform to connect the freelance guys with the projects. That was the original idea. We even uh, ended up in some uh, startup accelerators. We won some accelerator here in Slovakia with this project. But then it would require like a more you know, effort, which we've been expecting. And we had this platform and we met with Roman Slovenians, who is uh, the CEO of EBCG here in Cowork, where I'm sitting in Bratislava. And uh, Roman told me that, hey, you know, we got a lot of guys uh, and they are still asking me, do you have a job for me or do you have a candidate for me? And <laughs> now I, I was thinking about that and I, I told myself, okay, so we get a platform, Roman get a community, it needs to be supported with the, with the career changes. So then uh, we start partnering uh, in the middle of 2023 or like September time. Uh, and uh, now we get full platform running with the first projects there, uh, with the candidates registering like every day. I get tens of registrations daily there, what I'm seeing. So uh, we are focusing primarily on the EBCG participants, which are the CEOs, CFOs, controlling guys. But also now we are going to expand it to the pharma and PPM business with the conference in Basel. And uh, I must proudly say that we got already the first very interesting projects like CEO jobs and controlling jobs. Uh, now we are going to get the first PPM jobs there. So the original idea is to support the EBCG community and we would like to be raised on the EBCG community. But uh, our like the long term idea is that we would like to become a major player in the C-level hiring, which we do believe could be done more digitally as it is currently, because when, when you see the standard headhunting process, basically that didn't change for 40 years. Basically, the guys are doing the headhunting the same, and we would like to uh, bring more digital footprint to it, but still maintain the level of professionality. That's, uh, that's what I would like to highlight. So that's why we are having the Jobs by BCG platform running. And as I said at the beginning, it is like a third pillar of service, which EBCG is providing to the participants, to the community. While you were on stage being interviewed about the platform, I did see many people signing up uh, just to find out. So it struck me as a good way of getting a high quality pipeline of candidates where you know, okay, these people have all taking their career seriously enough to fly out to Prague. They're taking a couple of days away from their family. They're clearly motivated, you know, professionals at a high level in their organization, which makes me realize that you're you're generating good pipeline there of candidates. All right, you're right. Thanks very much for coming along. This was a great chat. Can people find you on LinkedIn or is there an email address or Twitters or? I'm very active on LinkedIn. So anyone who would like to chat uh, how we could help uh, with the jobs by BCG or with the ABCG as such, uh, could write me. I'm happy to discuss anything related uh, to this topic, but you know, I'm happy to meet in person if someone is around. Thanks for this opportunity to be here, James. Uh, great discussion with you. No, not at all. It's great to chat with you. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do next year's one as well. We can do a wrap up at the conference next year and have a beer afterwards. It would be amazing. Okay, thanks very much for listening to the podcast. Uh, if you found this type of review of live events useful, I'd really like to get a comment from you in the comments, or you can email me james.kennedy at procurementexpress.com. Uh, of course, I'm always looking for great guests like you're right to come along. But in, in the meantime, we'll see you in the next one.